On this episode of my Mastercraft Pro Star 190 restoration project, I'm going to attempt to salvage this back seat. With any luck, I'll make this base sturdy enough to handle a new cushion and upholstery work so I can enjoy many more years of my Mastercraft Pro Star. It's the back seat I mentioned earlier. It's in good condition, not great. It has a few blemishes where you know, coolers and water skis and who knows what have banged in the corners, chipped it up. But uh, that can happen, you know, within your first week of owning the boat. So I'm not too worried about that stuff. I really would like to have a brand new interior and that might be my plan. Uh, but for time being, I'm just gonna paint the light color on here. I'll tape off the blue. I think it's been done once before. So I plan to do that again. But as you can tell, there's no paint that's going to fix that. There's no amount of duct tape that's going to fix this. I can't even pull this together. So this will have to be addressed for sure uh, before I even put this one in the boat. We'll check out what I do with that later. But this is the big challenge. This base is rock. Uh, the wood is actually in okay shape. It's, it's broken here. It's, a little, it's like a quarter inch plywood surround but it has this spray in foam base and I suppose it's to make it lighter or make it float if it should foam the water, I guess. Uh, so I gotta, I gotta cook up a plan for this. I just need to figure out how to reinforce everything so I can staple this, this vinyl back down or any new vinyl should I have this redone. This needs to be structurally sound. into this seat a little bit. I peeled back some of this plastic mesh. And what I've discovered about this seat um, is that it's basically one piece of styrofoam. It probably poured into a mold and then they glued in these pieces of quarter inch plywood. And this is more than likely a marine grade plywood. And that's what are all your staple points. So uh, same within here. Same on this side. You've got your quarter inch plywood backing here. This is what I showed you on the bottom. It's also here for stapling. The material was actually stapled down to that point. Uh, which is a stretch because this stuff is broken down and sa sagged. So, uh, what I'm thinking is try to cut out this old foam here and try to salvage this. some work with my multi-tool here cutting this styrofoam very clean and I was able to uh, cut this bottom piece out of here left a nice clean cut and then I cleaned out this here and created a nice clean surface where if I can find the right kind of foam my thought is I can glue a new piece in there. It's, it's somewhat structural in that it holds this piece together, 
So I think, I mean, basically it just needs to hold the vinyl and be able to handle the seat getting pulled in and out. So I'm gonna keep on with what my train of thought is here, and then I'll have to come up with a solution uh, for the styrofoam, and I gotta figure out what kind of glue I can use. So we'll see what happens. I got nothing to lose here. Cut the rest of this rotten foam out. I gotta be really careful here because it's it is cracked a little bit there and it's a little weak, but if I can get that filled, it'll be fine. So you see this little funky notch I had to make, and I'll show you why I had to do that. I'm gonna rely on these staple boards for fastening. The, the back vinyl um, those staple down to here this this originally used to staple into the wood that would go along here but I'm gonna cheat I'm gonna end up stapling it to this it's a really good shape and I'm just gonna staple it right there but on this side I had some horrible rot right there so I cut that out I'll see what I can do I left a little bit of meat on the bone right here so I can clean this up and make it sharp. So if I put my new piece of foam in there, it'll fit flush, it'll glue better. It's gonna be, I'm sure it's gonna be a little ugly here just from the glue, but it doesn't matter how it looks as long as it functions. So that's what I got going so far, stay tuned. So a quick trip down to Hobby Lobby where I found sheets of styrofoam. And uh, here we have a package of two inch and a half styrofoam panels and then some half inch ones. I don't even think we're gonna need those. I picked up uh, right next door to Hobby Lobby's uh, Ace Hardware, picked up some 3M high strength contact adhesive that's moisture and heat resistant. And then some uh, moisture resistant DAP foam uh, sealant. I don't know if I'm gonna need that either, if I could make some clean cuts, but that's what I'll use to kind of clean up anything that's rough. So um, I'm gonna do some layering here. I'm gonna do some more trimming with my multi-tool so that I can layer those two and overlap a little bit for strength. And um, let's see how that pans out. Stay tuned. All right, I've just sprayed the 3M contact cement or contact adhesive on both sides of this and I'm hopeful that I can put this foam back in position. It's got a little bit of foam on both sides where it tore out and here it's clean and wood against a nicer surface here. So we'll see what happens here. I'm giving this a few minutes to tack up and it looks like it's ready so I'm going to press it into place and then flip this thing up and then I'll tape it. Uh, let's see if I can't get it to hold. So, see how it goes. So far, so good. I like that. It's going in nice and tight. Okay. money. I am thrilled. This stuff looks awesome. Alright. Now it's time to uh, 
cut out the first layer. It's going to have to fit in. It's going to have to butt up against these joints, and then it'll seal against this edge. And then the next layer will overlap. I'll trim this back and overlap the overlap, uh, second one. It should be pretty clean. All right, I've got this uh, piece of foam cut really close. I just had to do some adjustments here. Um, I got this really close. This edge just needs a little bit of, just a hair off of here. It's just a little bit too tight. I'm afraid I'm gonna break it. So I, I brought my belt sander outside because this stuff's so messy. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off. tricky. I can't really use the contact cement on the edges because it dries so fast. I'm not going to be able to move it in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this contact edge both sides and then right before I put it in I'll shoot some glue on here. Um, just matter of fact I think I'm just going to put it on one side because I don't want to get it all over the final. I don't want the mask all that off. I'm just going to spray it on the edge of the patch piece and then that should hold it and then it's going to be layered so it's not going to go anywhere. Here we go. So, Close it up good and tight. I don't even need to worry about that when I'm done here. Looking good. I'll show what the other side looks like. All right. So we got a good clean fit. Nice clean fit. So let's do some notch work for the second layer.
imagine. I've got the second panel cut out. And I'll double check the orientation on this again. This way. Snug, but it's, I really do need to get glue on these edges because I got to keep this from moving. So that's critical. I got to get glue in the, in the center, but these edges are most critical. Um, and I'm not going to worry about getting every, well, I'll even put as much on there as I can. So this goes like this. Let's get the glue going here. going to stick out here. I'm going to have to get a belt sander and sand off this because it's tapered. But it was just critical that I get that part to line up and glue in. Feels good. Feels good. It's tight. I can't even touch that now. Okay. So, I've just got to figure out a way to sand off this half inch taper down to zero. I think I'm going to need a belt sander. I do not have one, so it may be finally time to invest in one. All right, success. I decided just to go bananas with the uh, multi-tool. I mean, that's why they call it a multi-tool. It's good for everything. So I'm just going to shave this off, and then I'll get a uh, long block and some, whew, some sandpaper and uh, smooth it up. It gets covered by this heavy plastic mesh, so it doesn't have to be that pretty. Well, I found an upholstery shop in town and uh, I gave all of this to him to reupholster for me. And uh, he actually told me that I could have used just good old fashioned Elmer's glue instead of that uh, hot adhesive that I used. It wouldn't have melted the foam and would have held up to moisture. So I learned something there. Let's jump ahead a few months and show you how things turned I'm out. very happy with how this turned out. We completely replaced the cushion. Fits nice and tight. Got all new Velcro attached here. Brand new zipper, of course with brand new foam. And this is amazing, back to its original condition. I originally was just going to do the cushion, but uh, after I saw the work he did, I just couldn't resist. He had great prices, and so I asked him to go ahead and do the whole thing because I plan to paint this along with my other 
parts and pieces of the interior to match whatever he did. But I was worried that I wasn't gonna get a close enough match between the cushion and the back. So I went ahead and asked him to do all this. He also repaired my observer's seat, the back, and the seat, and it's equally as awesome as this. So now what I'll do is I'll use the Sim brand upholstery paint or dye, however you want to call it, and I will match my side panels and engine cover to this. And what I have also since learned is there are paint shops, automotive paint shops that will mix and tint the Sim brand vinyl paint uh, to match. So I took a sample of this vinyl to a paint shop and uh, had it matched. So I will use the matching paint for my sideboards and my engine cover and my captain's chair. I think uh, even if it's off by a little bit, you'll never notice. And eventually I may have those pieces redone by the same upholstery shop. You can count on a future episode where I'll paint all my interior parts and pieces to match this new upholstery and get everything installed on new carpet. Hey, thanks for checking out my video on that seat repair. I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. I can't wait to get it all back in the boat here soon. But right now, my 1990 Mastercraft Pro Star 190 is completely torn apart and I've got those parts laying all around the shelf. I have a lot of work to do, but I've got a lot of work done. And almost every step of the way, I've made a video to share with you folks. Please subscribe to my channel, ring the bell so you never miss another episode. We'll see you soon.